we have to be a member of Cherubs is because like yesterday for the roundtable discussions, we want to make sure that you're a parent or related when we talk about that information. So it's not just somebody sitting there listening to, you know, that type of information. Emotional, medical information, emotional things that we don't want to share. I remember my other big pitch. <laughs> and, this, and I can't believe I forgot because this is one of the big things that I've been really involved with is Washington, D.C. We go to Washington, D.C. every year and we visit a lot of Congress, uh, congressional offices, Senate and House side. We go in and some of them we've been to every year. There's nothing better in the world than walking into an office and having the person that we meet with, which is usually their health care aide, say, oh yes, I remember you from last year. How's everything been going? And that happened to me this year. That hasn't ever happened to me before. This year it did. I was like, oh, yes. Um, but we can only get into as many offices as people that we have. So for example, this year for Utah, I was able to get into both senators' offices, but only my representative office. That means there's three other representatives from Utah that we didn't get into because I'm not their constituent, I don't vote for them, and it's very hard to schedule a meeting if you don't live in their district. Senate's a little easier, House is much more difficult. So the more people we get, even from the same states, the more offices we get into, the more votes that we're getting, the more support that we're getting, the more staff members we're getting help to write legislation and to write um, resolutions and to help more ideas that we get to get this push forward. So that's my really, really, really big, heartfelt please begging, come to Washington, D.C. with us. Show up, even if you can only be there for a day. Bring your kids. Lots of people bring their kids every year. It's fine. A lot of the offices that, like, they loved it. Like, we were in an office, and one of the chairs was, had pulled out his toy lion, was playing on the desk, you know, the, the conference table in the conference room while we were meeting. And the aide was like, this is adorable. Um, and so it's nice to have them there. It's not that big of a deal. Don't feel like that excludes you if you have children. We've had lots of children with us. Um, and as I say, here's my cherub. This is him. Here's his scar. Here's his pictures. Here's the, you know. Um, Josh. Yes. Um, can you go, I mean, can you give them a rough draft of the day? Like, because I don't want people to think that's really intimidating to go to D.C. Oh, it's on. <laughs> yes. Um, so I showed up one year and I was like, hey, I'm going to go to D.C. this year. And so I went and I stood outside this building with Dong. I had no idea what I was doing. And I was like, okay, I guess we'll just kind of see how this goes. Um, and all the, PL, the meetings are set up. So when you register to go to Washington, D.C., um, all the meetings are scheduled with the offices by Dong. Just so we have one place scheduling the meeting so we don't end up overlapping with multiple people in multiple offices. So that's why I asked to register. So all the meetings are set up. They're expecting us. We get confirmations from their aides, from their um, schedulers. And you show up and say, hey, we have this appointment with this person. They say, okay. And then usually the aide comes out and gets you. And then you sit in the room and you have usually about 15 minutes or so, sometimes a little longer. Um, but usually we plan for about 15 minutes. And you give them a brief rundown of why we're here, what we do. We have the constituent just say, you know, this is my chair, but this is our story. And kind of tell them why it's personal to people who vote for them, because that's what they listen to. Um, they'll ask questions, take notes. They're usually pretty good. If you want to have a photo, they'll take a picture. And it's just really actually pretty laid back and really easy. And they're just regular, everyday people who want to hear from you. That's the other thing. They want to hear from us. They don't want... Now, Don and I are a little different because we're parents as well. But they don't want Don to show up as president of CDH International and say, I'm president of CDH International. I'm here to tell you that this is what you need to do. They'll listen to it, and they'll be like, okay. But what they want is they want a parent to come in to tell about their child. So many aides have told me, I meet with these professional lobbyists all day long and hear their sales pitch and they're getting paid to be here and they're getting paid to, to get results. I would much rather sit and listen to a parent for 10 minutes and hear their story and recognize that 
You paid your own way to be here. You're not getting paid. You came on your own. You paid out your plane ticket. You're staying in a hotel. You're doing, and they recognize that, and they know that, and they appreciate that, and they want to hear from us. They don't want to hear from the business side of the professionals. They want parents in the offices, and a couple of days have told me, and I, I use cystic fibrosis a lot because their foundation has been around for 60 years, and they have a lot of money and a ton of awareness, and many A's have told me, like, the reason cystic fibrosis has what they have and is where they are at is because parents like you sat in offices like these over the last 40 years doing exactly what you're doing now. And we're just starting, they've been doing it. But it's because of parents. It's us. That's how we make the difference. That's how we get, because I had a list last year, thanks to Gab. Um, and pulling up and working with NIH, we had a list of all of the active NIH grants for CDH research. And there was like seven or eight of them, and it was $4 million total. That was it. And so to go in and say, these kids are only getting $4 million, and on average, we're spending hundreds of millions of dollars in medical costs to take care of these kids every year, Let's get a little bit more of that money on the front end. Can we get a little bit more from NIH? Can, is there something we can do? And that's where we're going to make the huge difference so that labs like Dr. Cardin's can get the grants, to get the funding, to do the research. So how much does it cost to do your research, Gab? Just a rough estimate. A, a yearly cost of everything that goes on in your lab. What's it, what does it take to run your lab for a year? Three quarters of And that's just one lab. A small and a small lab. A small lab. We are a small lab. A small lab that does fantastic work. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's a small lab. The larger labs, it's even more and more and more. So if one small lab is taking half a million to three quarters of a million dollars a year to operate, and there's only four million dollars being given, it's not going very far. And then there's a lot of labs that would do research that can't get grants and they can't get the money to do the funding to do the research. That's why Washington, D.C. is so important. That's why it's important to get as many people there as you can, because it doesn't matter. Yes, I'm there for Utah, that's great. I need other people from Utah because I only have one rep, and we need to get into all of those offices. Please, 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 please come to Washington, D.C. with us. It's one of the biggest things that we do. Dr. Cardin? <laughs> I'm going to call you, I'm going to be professional. So I, I would say actually it is the single most important, well, besides, uh, I would say, you know, obviously all the support, um, you know, your participation in research, but in terms of long-term thinking, I mean, going to D.C. is absolutely essential. Um, and it, it is totally true that your, the, the, the way to get the, uh, the ear of your representative or your, or your senator is to be there in person in D.C. because um, you've made, they know that you've made a considerable amount of things. Most, they have however many hours, they have, let's say eight hours a day that they're going to hear, and probably of those eight hours, 15 minutes are going to be by somebody who's not a paid lobbyist. So um, it's, you know, you are you were going to look very different. And, and I always think about the fact that if I'm not filling that time, I, so me going in as a scientist or you going as a parent, they're being filled in by you know some industry. You know, like I went into to Mike Lee's office, and the people who were sitting next to me was a group of paid lobbyists for the for the you know the airline industry, right? So they're they're advocating for regulations for yeah I don't know for building you know aircraft. Wouldn't you rather them to be listening to you talking about the importance of having research or you know whatever it is that yeah? Because if it's not important to us, it's not going to be important to them. Yeah. It's not. And Josh, tell them how we make them remember us best. Oh, by making them cry. It doesn't take a lot of effort for me to get there. Uh, anybody who knows me, well, and I think the kids, right? The kids are everything. You bring those kids in, and they're—I mean, all of the kids are super adorable. 
My God, that right, the aides are all melting, the congressmen are melting, and that's what they meant. That's true. Well, and, and, when, and when I say that, though, because when you have a mom who comes in with a survivor and talks about what it was like when their kid was in the hospital and gets emotional about, like, it's not necessarily all sad tears, but it's that emotional connection. So, and I would say it's the kids in all senses, right? So they're the right. kids who are surviving. And then it's always really wonderful when parents bring pictures of the kids who didn't survive. Oh, that photo album. Right? Yeah. It's both. Right. It's I, all good. I do. I have a travel size photo album that my wife put together of both of our girls in one album because I don't have a lot of space. And I don't like lugging around a ton of stuff when I'm walking around Capitol Hill all day. And a lot of times I don't even really open the photo album. But I pull out the photo album and I tell them, like, a parent should have something more than a photo album to remember their child. That's one of my go, and that makes an impact. You can see the change in their faces when you do things like that. Or when you have, you know, you know pull up your iPad and you have a picture and there's 12, this is my kid. These are the children of my friends who weren't able to be here. And these are their children. That's the type of thing that makes an impact. They remember it. Because like I said, it's getting to the point now where I go into offices and people remember me specifically, and why I'm there. And that is amazing. And that's the thing I think that all of those people, most of them I can relate to, is that they, they are either, they have their own kids or they are, you know, obviously they have parents, right? So I think that's how they relate to it. And you don't. I mean, we want as many families in D.C. as we can possibly get, but you can meet with your congressmen and your senators here. They have at-home days, in Utah or whatever state you're in, and you, we can help you make appointments to go in there as a group. So like we can say, hey, Hope, we want to set up Utah days for in-house, and here's the times, and can you gather up all the families, and you guys go in together for those. You know, so I mean, we want you in DC. The more numbers, the better. But if you can't, if that's something you uh, you absolutely cannot do, don't think that you cannot help. Or just picking up the phone after we've been saying, hey, I'm one of those families whose people were in your office yesterday, will you please help my child and, and children like my child? It's every little thing helps. So that was my last big thing was DC. I knew there was some another thing <laughs> that's that I wish for. I, I would say actually the in person, whether it's in your in your home state or in DC, is the thing that does it. Especially nowadays it's actually really hard to get a hold of anyone on the phone, right? Their phone line it is hard on the phone, but you know, after going lobbying for years, we pretty much have everyone's email address, <laughs> so we can uh, we can help you guys get those meetings, and we are more than happy to do so. Thank you, Josh. Okay, we want to start a new live video. All right. I wait till 